wait for that. No. Really looking forward to it. In exactly three years from now, the London Olympic Games will be getting underway with the world's best athletes taking part in the opening ceremony. The man who flew the flag for Britain at the last Games, Mark Foster, has been reporting for Look East all this week on the range of swimming activities available in this region. And today, Mark had a swimmer's dream job. He opened the newest Olympic-sized swimming pool. At last, after all the talk, Corby's International Swimming Pool is open and ready for business. It's a real example of the 2012 effect. After Norwich, Corby is the region's second 50-metre pool. The third will be opened in Basildon in April 2011. Well, not only have you got a, a brand new 50-metre pool, and many cities a lot bigger than Corby around the country are green with envy about that, but uh, if you're 16 or under, you can swim here free. If you're 60 or over, you can swim here free. To mark the opening in Corby today, there was more than a splash of razzmatazz with the Corby cheerleaders. There are also displays from some of the clubs who will benefit. Groups like Corby Swimming Club, Rushmore Synchro and the Luton and Bedford Diving Academy. The pool in Luton is like nearing 40 years old, so the boards, well the boards are reasonably new, but it is nothing compared to this pool. It's, it, the boards are really good quality, it's a good pool. I love it, it's so good to finally have an Olympic size swimming pool to train in, because like, you really get up your stamina and all your energy levels and it's really good. Corby's new pool is an official London 2012 training camp for the Olympic and Paralympic Games. The icing on the cake now would be to land a big team to base themselves here. It just shows, follow your dream, your dream can come true. Icing on the cake is to see a Corby person win the Olympics in 2012 using this pool for training. All we need now is for someone to open it. And I think that's where I come in. the end of our swim week, whether it be swimming, diving, synchro or taking a dip on the wild side, I hope we've inspired you to get in the water. Mark Foster, BBC Look East, Corby. I think he's wearing one of those go faster swimming suits that everybody's on about. Yeah. yeah. You got one of them? Oh, well, I don't need them. <laughs> now, there are lots of events taking place in the region this weekend to mark the fact that London 2012 is just three years away. To find out what's happening near you, you can visit london2012.com and click on Open Weekend. Australia's cricketers took time off from the Ashes today to play Northamptonshire. The fixture at the county ground attracted a full house. They're one down in the Ashes series. Now, there was plenty of talent on display with many Australians keen to impress ahead of next week's third test at Edgbaston. But as Jonathan Park reports, the weather left many disappointed. To one of the world's best-known cricketers, signing a name is a bit like buttering toast. But for the North Hans under-10s, a life-changing moment to meet the great Brett Lee. He wasn't in the most talkative mood, though. I'm answering any questions. Thanks, boys. At least for the media. But one bright spark did manage to ask a key question. I asked him if he was back in the ashes this series, and he said, um, I'm definitely going to play. Sadly, Lee wasn't in the Aussie side, nor was their skipper, Ricky Ponting. But still, seven of the team who played at Lords last week were on view today. There's a lot of their players are playing for places too, which is always going to be good news. Uh, some of them haven't played that much on this tour, so I'm sure that they'll be determined to get in and, uh, and make an impression. Among the North Ants team, bowler Jack Brooks, playing his first ever first-class game. Welcome to the Lions' den, Jack. Not many people would put money on people making a first-class game against Australia um, to make my debut. Just a bag of nerves, but you know I'll take it out there. I'll be all right once I'm on the pitch. So. These matches are all about giving the tourists some practice, but also about generating some much-needed revenue for the counties. A chance to sell around 12,000 tickets over three days. Without this match, North Hans would have recorded a financial loss this season. Talking of forecasts, the weather looked promising early on. The Aussies won the toss and chose to bat, but not for the first time this summer. Highly rated opener Philip Hughes went to another short ball. Davy man Jack Brooks was given the ball, arms, legs and heart pumping. He didn't look out of place. But the Aussies were at times playing some classy shots, reminding England that 1-0 in the Test Series is a fragile lead. Now we're going to fight back, and I think that's what they're going to do. They won't let it lie. They're not as good as England at the minute. Hopefully we're going to beat them in the Ashes. The oldest rivalry in cricket resumes on Thursday. As for the contest at the county ground today, well, there was only one winner, really, the British Summertime. 
England will hope to have the Aussies on the run for the rest of the Ashes series. Actually, it did stop raining long enough for them to start playing again. 2.23 for three is the latest score we have. Mike Hussey, 74, not out. Used to play for Northamptonshire, of course. The weather. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, you saw there some pretty heavy rain, and this was a scene really across much of uh, the region this afternoon. Those showers pretty widespread.